I have three doors to three ports. Which one do you choose? Port. You might have heard this term to describe physical connectors that connect to one another or for those places for ships to dock for land. But in this mission, it is a different manner. Put simply, a port is a piece of software that is made to run on a piece of hardware. An easy example is with video games, as often you will see one kind of software, being the game itself, running on different gaming platforms. The reason for this is that these different gaming platforms are owned by different companies with each company having their own priorities with what the console's image will be. For example, Microsoft has generally presented their consoles as the most powerful in the industry, whilst appealing to most hardcore gamers out there. On the other hand, Nintendo have traded in upgrading to super powerful hardware since the 7th generation with the Wii, in exchange for a more casual audience's image and motion controls. They lost technical prowess but gained many new fans, as well as a console with its own identity. For each company, it isn't just the hardware, but the experiences that are provided. Now obviously, the experiences themselves aren't going to be that different if said piece of software is available elsewhere. But that is more of a case on who owns the intellectual property, or IP, for short. For example, Nintendo IPs have rarely been on anything else besides Nintendo consoles, with the exceptions being games designed for smartphones here and there. Exclusivity is a common technique that companies will employ to entice people to pay for their products or services. From hardware with video games to shows on streaming platforms. An interesting example with video games in particular is Spider-Man, where the iconic web crawler himself would often be multi-platform on many different consoles in the past for years, but has recently had his recent appearances exclusive to all Sony platforms, games, and additional content. Though sometimes that exclusivity isn't always based on the IP ownership itself, and rather on the capabilities of what the hardware can provide in general, whether that be the technical aspects or the controllers that are used to help deliver the experience. Uh, at the time, there weren't many commercially available engines, honestly. Um, like, most companies built their own. There, there wasn't, like, Unity and Unreal didn't become, like, available until much later. Uh, but also, specifically for this game, I think even if there was one available, we wouldn't have used it because we were really pushing the Xbox. Like, I don't... We were... We kind of had to optimize everything in order to, to get what we needed out of this. We, we needed our own engine in order to do the things that, that we needed to do for this game, for sure. Like, this game wouldn't even run on the PS2. Yeah, this game really, really pushed the Xbox. Which is why, whenever we told EA we couldn't do it for the PS2, they didn't believe us. We learned the hard way. We all learned the hard way. And of course, console games can make it to PC platforms and vice versa. Though despite gamers often calling these ports to computers PC ports, it helps to determine if said PC port is capable of working with your current operating system, such as Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. Don't expect to install your Mac OS version of a game on a Windows or Linux system. On another note, make sure the installer that your operating system uses is compatible with the game that you are installing, as you shouldn't expect the 32-bit version of Windows 10 to run the 64-bit versions of games. With PC ports in general, they tend to have more bells and whistles when it comes to performance options. 
things such as frame rates, resolutions, and even what graphical options you may want to toggle are readily accessible in the options menu, provided they are still included, of course. PC games also tend to have a lot more options at their disposal when it comes to mods, if you know where to look and install them, that is. But that's for another day. Basically, with a PC port, you usually have a lot more options for performance settings when compared to consoles, due to the varying combinations of hardware that everyone has with consoles generally being the same for years. Unless, of course, there is an enhanced version of a console, such as the PS4 Pro when compared to the base PS4. The most notable downsides of these ports, however, is that if your hardware is lacking a certain component, you likely won't have a smooth time. Installing a game can also be inconsistent, ranging from easy to hard, and the performance can vary depending on the hardware used. Whereas console setups are more simpler and consistent. That's all I have to say for now. Ask any questions if you're curious, and to see you next time with something else. Bye!